Welcome to Chris Guitars, welcome to my home studio, welcome to Nebula 2. This guitar is in progress, we're there. Uh, I'm, with yeah, mic drop. Done, thank you very much, goodbye. See you later. Okay. I am so happy with how this is progressing, except right at the start of this, I need to apologize profusely for a completely inaccurate fact. I, I stated the other day, uh, while I was installing the sort of extra little bits of wood here and here, that wood shrank more along its length than along either width, and I can only blame the, I don't know, that was a box of planes falling over behind the camera for some reason, there's a poltergeist. Uh, what can I blame? What can I blame? Uh, the, the horrendously weak coffee I drink. Apparently I drink, I, I have far too much milk in my coffee and that's replacing much required caffeine perhaps. Uh, I, slow day, my brain went sideways and uh, my, I lost all sense of direction and lied to you. I have pinned a comment at the top of that video saying, I was wrong, I'm sorry. But uh, yes, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I, 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 I. Anyway, that's besides the point. That being done, you will forgive me. Will you vote for me next time? Um, we're, we're there. The, uh, a couple of people mentioned the brake angle. That isn't an issue. Uh, it's not as high as a, a traditional arch top where you've got the neck like way off and all sorts of cool stuff. But we were going for 18 and with the strings up, we're at 18, so, uh, well, there we go. It's, it's gonna be fun. Now, what isn't necessarily gonna be fun is for most of today, I'm going to be sanding and finessing and changing and doing that sort of stuff. It's gonna be dusty, but it's sunny outside. I can have the windows open and we'll be all right. <sighs> what do I need to do? I mean, we're, we're pretty much there. It's just a case of, finessing the shapes. I'm going to do some carving. Uh, I'm sure many of you have been wondering what I'm going to do uh, where these uh, extra pieces are and uh, there's a little one in there as well. I'm going to carve those away so they look like natural um, parts of the burr, etc. That's going to have some work. We're at the final stage of finessing this build and then by the end of this video I will also do some stain tests and, uh, well, I'm not sure if you noticed, but Shred, the other current build, some of the work I've been doing on this has been somewhat in preparation for this. Horrified? Don't be. We're good. I got gotcha. you. I got you. I've got you, babe. How many people are now really, really annoyed with me for getting that song stuck in their head? I'd say 20, 30,000, something like that. Anyway, here's how we got to this point. Sanding. Wow, much sadness. Burn it.
Today, the fun begins. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! We're getting there. <laughs> that is a good neck joint. Neck joint, top joint, ah. I have said this before and I really should have listened to myself. Before you glue something in, please make sure to rub out or sand away the pencil lines. It makes it look like a poor joint, but it's actually just a line of graphite under the glue. I mean, it's not so much of an issue with this one because I am obviously staining, uh, etc. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and scrape or sand that away and see what happens. I think I'm gonna have to do a repair there. If you remember last week, that section of wood just pinged off during the process uh, of sanding, actually. Now, I'm not so sure. I, I think maybe if I carve a little bit of extra there, I'm gonna see what happens. The whole point of this is this acoustic instrument is gonna look, I hope, like it's actually a solid piece of wood that just happens to be hollow. So if that bit of figuring continues down just a little bit into the sides, that will help with that illusion. And we're gonna do something similar here. So. I'm going to see what happens. Let me know what you think in the comments. I mean, it's too late, but it will definitely help with the next time. Yes, Ben, use your head as a clamp. It's about the only good it is for. With a lot of this stuff on, on an acoustic instrument uh, or something more delicate like this, really work holding is my biggest issue. And I'm trying to get here into just these corners where the sandpaper, well, it's not as precise as it needs to be. A, a blade is better than an abrasive. Um, and yeah, to hold it, it's, I've used this analogy before, but it's like mountain climbing. Not that I've ever climbed a mountain, nor ever will. Um, but when you're hanging off the side of a cliff, you want to have as many parts of you touching the instrument, the cliff, you got me there, as possible. So, you know, hands, head, uh, the back of my hand is on here as well. And then I'm touching the tool as well. Everything is all there. And then when I make a move with my chisel, or plane or whatever I happen to be working with, it's absolutely intentional. There is no room for error. Let that be a lesson to you. Well, that's better. Why are you being so loud? The cock? You got a strawberry. Of course you got a strawberry. I don't get strawberries. Well, what can you do? I don't have anything. No? Fine.
It's all you care about, isn't it? Treats. Mm. Back to work. We're getting there. And I haven't used a single sanding machine yet. Ha. I'm not really in the mood for, uh, for noise. Not at all. By the way, great guitar build off. I've since turned the music off and I'm currently watching, well, I'm watching SC Guitars at the moment, uh, which is uh, quite amusing because he's hilarious. Um, I'm trying to watch every single one of the great guitar build off videos and I think that's going to be in the region of 2000 videos. So I've got my work cut out for me. But um, yeah, I heartily encourage you to check out the playlist on uh, the Crimson Guitars YouTube channel and check out what's happening in the Great Guitar build -off. If you aren't in it, but you want to be, there is still time. Um, uh, it, it's incredible. It's, it's literally incredible. And uh, yeah, check it out. I needed to do that to sort of take my brain out of sanding for a while, but here we go, onwards. I hope that wasn't too boring for you. Uh, sanding is sanding after all, but this guitar is now at 100 and 180 grit, pretty much all over. I'm very happy with the neck. I'm happy with everything except I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. And I'm not entirely, well, I know, but I just haven't done it yet. Let's start some carving. Uh, now, I have got a little battery powered mini Dremel that I'm going to use. Don't forget eye protection. I nearly stabbed myself in my eye with my finger saying you need eye protection. Um, yeah, that's fine. And this is a sort of a multi-spiral flute cutting saw bit. Uh, it's a little bit more delicate than the carving bits I normally use because I've got a smaller thing to play with. So let's get the guitar and the vice and play. Hmm. I need to angle the vise. Hmm. Oh, that's better. How's it doing? Grim's intent. That was sticking out too far. Oh, wow. That's far too long. I'm gonna find something else. Hold on. There we go. One of these little carving bits. It'll do. I'm yeah, trying to make this look as natural as possible. So I've got a, a different one here that's sort of lying saucer shape to go into weird angles. Success. So here's an interesting thing. I'm, I'm using my, my scalpel blade to scrape away the glue that was obvious, you know, there's an excess of it. If I put my scraper into the corner, my scraper, my scalpel, into the corner of the wood and then pull away, it tends to chatter. And that just accentuates over time and scrapes that chatter mark into it. By scraping towards the edge, I've got 
a, a long, slow run in and I'm avoiding all chatter. I then do have a little bit of excess to carve away uh, right up at the edge, but it's a, it's a cleaner scrape, as it were. Cleaner scrape. I, I've, I've been listening to Stabbing Westward a lot since uh, I mentioned it in, in a recent video after it randomly showed up in my uh, audio feed after 15 years. I'm rather enjoying this sort of uh, vintage industrial metal. <laughs> I'm well aware that most of you are around about my age as well, so yeah. <sighs> we old vamp. <laughs> oh, crikey. Sanding, sanding, sanding's not healthy. I, uh, <laughs> you, you, you tend to lose yourself in your thoughts and you sort of listen to the music, going with the rhythm and the sanding. And uh, I, I got back to thinking about uh, 20 odd years ago when I started building instruments and you know, the same sort of thing, the same sort of rhythm, the music going, the sanding, the sanding, the sanding. Um, worrying about the fact that you don't know what the hell you're doing and uh, <clears throat> and then it brought me right back to today and the fact that there are literally tens of thousands of you watching me speak right now and the crushing sense of holy shit, how the f did this happen crikey that's frightening I, I, I no offense I don't think about you all the time I don't I try not to think about the fact that you guys are watching this but Whew. Hi, welcome to my world. It's quite frightening. <sighs> this is working out all right, though. I, th I think this is sublime. I, I am, I'm just so happy with this instrument. This is the second version of a guitar that I built a while ago and the original guitar had bevels around the edge and I'm currently torn as to whether that would be a good idea or not. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is is film a little bit of drawing, a little bit of designing and think about it. Um, I have the entire time been in two minds as to whether I should fill the various holes and cavities and inclusions and things uh, or just leave them. The point of this instrument is, well, the final finish is going to be ultra high gloss. We, we want something visually stunning and having ultra high gloss and then unpolished or unbuffed tiny inclusions is a problem. So, so that being said, I'm going to have to make some dust and uh, make a mixture of uh, wood glue and dust and fill all of the small holes. That causes an issue later on with regards to stain. Uh, stain does not like going into areas that have dust and glue on, uh, even wood glue, uh, even when you have more dust than glue, as it were. But that doesn't necessarily matter because with this finish, the nebula theme, uh, we can go in with uh, gold paint or something like that, uh, some, a, a solid finish and actually just paint spots over and it would actually improve things rather than detract. So I'm not worried about that too much. The thing is, in the original guitar, the binding around the fretboard, etc., was left natural and golden and beautiful. And that's the plan for that on this instrument as well. I am wondering about potentially having some bevels around the edge and having that same two-tone effect on here. Now, I'm not entirely sure if Ben uh, from Gear Garage, who was the, the 
commissioner of this guitar is going to like that or not. So this is by way of me saying, Ben, what do you think? Let me know. Uh, and the same thing for you guys in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'm not going to get to staining this today or this week even. Uh, but I'm going to do this drawing and we're going to do a few stain tests. Uh, there's a little bit less video this week. We have got both a short week uh, with regards to Easter and bank holidays and all of that nonsense. And today, right now, is my 15th wedding anniversary. And uh, I don't have long in the workshop, really, um, because some things are more important. I've just realized that I don't really want this build to end. I'm having so much fun. Oh yes, bevels. So the final, the final issue with that is this isn't a solid guitar. No parts of it are solid. And I don't want to remove structural integrity. That would be bad. That, 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 that would be bad. Holy hell, it's pretty. So the only line that isn't an even line around the edge is this one here to give it a bit more forward momentum. Okay, so same thing on this side. Figure out what I'm doing on there. This here. No, we, same thing. Same thing, just be gentle. Have you considered subscribing to our channel yet? Now, there is one other possibility. So the other option is that I can carve that away with a rasp, chisels, etc., and actually lay on a separate piece and give a, a contour going down to sort of there, which would make the guitar a lot more comfortable. But to be honest, we already have an offset instrument here. I don't think that making it more offset, well, I don't know. I really don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments below. Uh, I'm gonna call it a day here. There's a little bit too much going on. There it is from the point of view. I, I, I'm not sure. It's a technique that high-end acoustic guitar builders use all the time. It's something I've always wanted to do, but never have done. I would glue on a another piece of this bow maple of course then again I'd have to change the shape because I don't want it cutting into that mm, I don't know I don't know yeah it could be amazing it's also a way to extend the build out just a little bit longer uh, well, let me know what you think I could not I couldn't avoid it I'm sorry I I haven't been in my workshop for a day and a half, and I'm starting to get antsy. All right, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a stain test. Simple, uh, no talking. I'm gonna lay down some black. Well, I'm gonna sand this piece down. You don't need to see any more sanding. I'm gonna lay down a black layer. And then see what the colors do on this wood over that. And I'm going to do a quick experiment with a dip pen and the crimson grain enhancing feathers. Uh, we've got red, we've got gold, and there is also a blue. Uh, all of which are colors that work very, very well in a nebula. Uh, great guitar build off, the contestants t-shirts. Uh, are they are being shipped out right now and the great guitar build off is just so awesome i'm having a total blast uh, there are a couple of hundred videos to watch so far uh, out on the uh, that we've seen on the playlist check it out for now sanding staining this workshop this is my spirit animal. It's my center.
Now, don't be too scared. These aren't necessarily the actual colors I'm choosing. I wanted to see what the yellow would look like mixed with the blue, etc. We're predominantly going purples and uh, purples and maybe a little bit of red thrown in there, purples and blues and blacks and dark, because that's what the original was and that's what the client wants, but I'm playing. You gotta play. So, let's play. You have to shake these grain fillers. There's a little ball bearing inside to mix the good stuff up. So I'm not sure if I love or hate this yet. I think hate, I think the, the wood itself is just so fantastic. It doesn't need this. I think I'm taking something that looks gorgeous and trying to fake the natural look and that's just not working for me. Okay, uh, fail. I'm gonna play with the gold just to see what it looks like, just for fun. So there's that stuff. I think the gold might work. No, it's, it's making it look cartoony. I'm not happy with that. Well, you've got to try things. If you never try things, you will never find out. Yeah, no. All right, one last little experiment. I am wondering, I'm wondering what it would look like if we take some of the stain over the top. Oh, that's much nicer. So you could get some interesting effects with this because it's similar to the substrate. We're okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, failure, total failure. Um, however, that's just the way it goes. Now, uh, we're pretty set in the blues and the purples and I think the black well, I mean, definitely. So the black substrate to make the grain pop and then the blues to the purples. I don't think I need any yellow. There's going to be some natural wood around the outline. I'm fairly convinced already that I don't want to have that artificial arm carve. I think it adds... There's already a tad... There's a little bit of complexity in this instrument. And I think that uh, change, add, adding that extra angle on there and I don't know it, it doesn't vibe with me uh, so yeah uh, blues greens purples the green there I, I really had high hopes for adding uh, the metallics on top of that I didn't realize it would look quite so cartoony um, here we go Talitha flash up the image that you've been working up for our uh, soon to be announced uh, brand of coffee and Beard oil. Don't get the two. She's been playing around with a sort of cartoonified version of my face, which I actually quite enjoy. Um, but anyway, yeah, we've got. We, I've been tasting coffee for months. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Um, now there was one other idea that I will tell you about. And I think it might have the same effect, but what I thought would be interesting is if I went on uh, uh, probably first, probably on the raw on the raw wood, and then gold leafed uh, around some of the natural interesting things, and then stained over. So the whole instrument, it would essentially look like the complication, the 90 hour build, which I'm hoping you've watched. Uh, if you haven't, where have you been? Um, so that natural sort of spider web of a metallic undervein coming through. Then again, I 
Uh, uh, the guitar's just off, off camera here. I mean, hold on. Let us shelve that idea for another build. I can't f with this wood. I can't. It's too good. Uh, <laughs> all right, I can't believe it. This is gonna be so fun. Um, so next week I'm going to I'm going to have fine sander to 320. I've only done to 240 at this stage. I will have no. Let's do it in the correct order. I'm gonna grain fill the hell out of this. I'm then gonna fine sand to 320. I am then going to damp it down with water to raise the grain. I am then gonna sand it again to 320. And then, and only then, am I gonna stain this beautiful thing black. Now, I'm not sure if you remember way back when, when I started talking about this, these maple stripes in here, they are gonna be stained as well. And uh, they're gonna, essentially match the, uh, the the blues and the purples and the things beautifulness coming through here so that's going to be fun to do uh, i'm hoping that the black veneers are going to stop any um, seepage seriously fingers crossed on that one and it's going to go from the sort of the purple to the blue to just the black to maybe even natural up at the headstock um, we've got that i have got uh, a raised crimson guitars logo to go on there Maybe another logo. Maybe. Should we do that? Let's see. Uh, so I need to make that. Whether that, I think that's probably going to be next week as well. So the staining begins, and then I want to leave it to cure. And while it's curing, I'm going to I'm going to make a logo. Um, I am both incredibly excited to see this project finished and really disappointed that it's not going on for longer. Hence me fucking around with the stain. Excuse my language. Uh, yeah. It's four minutes to six in the evening and I have a date with my children to watch a movie, so I will catch you on the flip side. Is it cool to say catch you on the flip side? Or is it like retro or not cool? I've never been able to figure out what's cool and what's not cool. I think you might sort of have noticed that already. See you guys soon. Oh, you were a beautiful guitar. Yes, you are. Click like, subscribe, continue being awesome, have a fantastic weekend, go make some sawdust, check out Great Guitar Build Off, check out our patrons, uh, our Patreon page, and the live streams. And my arm's getting tired, this camera is heavy with this big lens on it. See you soon. Goodbye.